안녕하십니까 온라인 서저리의 김경원입니다. Greetings, I'm Dr. Kim y o n of Online Surgery. I'm honored to meet you. Let's take a look at today's case. This is 75-year-old male patient. The patient had missing teeth in the upper left area from number 22 to number 26. The patient wanted implants to be placed in the upper left area, but the patient was actually wearing RPD. But because of it, the patient felt discomfort and that there was a gingival swelling at times. If you look at patient's medical history, the patient had hypertension and diabetes, but they were under control. Due to cardiovascular disease, antithrombotic agent was taken. The patient's medical situation is much more stable now. I didn't write it here, but the patient also smoked from a different dental clinic He was told that implant treatment was not visible. As a result, a few years ago, the patient received RPD. If you look at patient's x-ray, in the case of upper right, implant treatment was received a long time ago. Long external type implants have been placed in the upper right, and you can see very long implants placed in the lower as well. The patient received implant treatment a long time ago before the patient had an internal medical issues and due to such disease, the patient has been delaying treatment. I consulted a doctor from internal medicine and the surgery itself was not considered contraindication. So after controlling antithrombotic agent, Surgery was determined. Three implants were to be placed in number 22, 24, and 26. You'd see it in CT, but in number 26, there was not that many bone left. One cast was planned. Digital guide would be used for sinus lift. In number 22, it was missing for quite some time, but you can see Comparatively favorable alveolar bone thickness. The height is not a problem. In the case of number 24, there's a bit of buccal bone loss, but comparatively it was favorable. In the case of number 26, the height of residual alveolar bone is quite low. There is still lack of bone formation in the extraction socket. There was about 2 to 3 millimeters of residual bone left. If you look at CT, the sinus itself was clean. There would be no problem in using one cast. The patient had quite a long span bridge in the palate area and the alveolar crest area. Four resin balls were made and merging was attempted in number 22. The Alveolar bone width was comparatively nicely maintained. A 4.0 10mm TS3 implant was planned in number 24. 4.5 by 10mm implant was to be placed slightly deeply. There would be no special bone graft on the buccal side because the patient was smoking. That was the plan in number 26. The residual alveolar bone level was not significant. 5.0 by 8.5 was planned. And The plan was to use one cast and to do crystal approach. Bone graft was planned as well. The shortest distance to the inferior margin of the sinus was 3.48 millimeters. Initial drilling of up to 2 millimeter was planned. The longest distance was about 4 millimeters, so the residual alveolar bone was limited. If we were not to use one cast, if residual alveolar bone height is under 3 millimeters, then doing 2 millimeter drilling can be quite difficult, but we have a very important tool called one cast and one guide. By using digital guide system, we can drill 2 millimeters as well. This is a sequence. The alveolar bone was considered to be soft bone and The residual alveolar crest was considered to be 3 millimeters. After tissue punch, 2.2 twist drill would be used from 2 millimeters, so you would add 5 millimeter stopper on 7 millimeter drill. After expanding gradually, the final drill would be 3.8. 
gradual increase will be done, sinus floor will be penetrated through hydro lift, the bone graft will be done, followed by implant placement. If you look at the upper right area, there is a significant prosthesis present through merging. Surgical template was made and adapted. You can see that it has been adapted nicely. For a more sure fixation in number 24, vertical anchor would be used. If you look here as planned, in immediate post-op image, number 22, 24, and 26 implants have been placed, and in number 26, crystal approach was used, AOS was used for bone graft. In number 22, this is immediate post-op image, and because the alveolar bone width was comparatively more favorable, 4.0 by 10 millimeter implant was placed. ISQ was 73 and 75, so quite good. In number 24, you can see that implant has been placed deep, and ISQ value was about 80 in number 26. Despite there being lack of alveolar bone, you can see that bone graft was done nicely at their crestal approach. The implant was placed at ISQ was about 77. It was more favorable than anticipated. This is post up two months. And this is after five months, the ER type of prosthesis were delivered. As you can see, initially the patient experienced a significant discomfort with a removable partial denture. We were now able to replace it with implant treatment, which was previously considered impossible because of medical history. Within a year, the patient came back, a panoramic image was taken. In number 26, on panoramic image, bone formation can be observed. On CT, in number 22, on the labial side, the wall is intact. And in number 24, healing is progressing without major problem. In number 26, Although alveolar bone formation is not fully done up to the apex of the implant, you can see nice bone healing. Let's take a look at the surgical clip. One guide template was adapted. You can see nice stability with one guide template. Tissue punch was used in number 22. This is regular hole. Tissue punch was used to remove overriding mucosa. This was how it was done in number 22. And because this was a distal free end case, in order to make sure that the template does not shift, I applied pressure with my hand. Gingiva was removed in number 22 and 24. In number 26, wide type gold rim option was used overriding soft tissue was removed you could see that i have removed the template to see whether the soft tissue was removed completely in number 24 is slightly less properly done so it was removed it was done for number 22 as well Initial drilling was performed while holding down the template in order to prevent any shift. In number 22, 3.5 by 10 millimeter drill was used to prep the site. 3.5 by 10 millimeters. In number 24, 3.5 by 10 millimeter drill was used as well. In number 22, one guided drill, 4.0 by 10 millimeter was used. In number 22, because the implant with diameter 4.0 was going to be used, 4.0 drill was used. A TS3BA surface, 4.0 by 10 millimeter implant was irrigated first and positioned. 
you can see here the bone quality looked quite nice. It was placed about 80% using engine, implanted driver and torque wrench was used to adjust the final depths and hex positioning was done. Primary stability was over 30 Newton centimeters, so it was quite favorable. Through the yellow marking, you can check the implant position. In number 20, 44.5 by 10 millimeter one guide drill was used for final drilling. In number 24, 4.5 by 10 millimeter implant was placed using engine about 80%. Stability looked quite favorable. Implant to driver was used. Hand wrench was used to get final position. Primary stability looks quite stable. Yellow marking was used to adjust Depths and hex positioning primary stability was over 30 newton centimeters. Before moving on to number 26 and number 24, implant anchor was used. This was used as anchor because the residual alveolar bone in number 26 was only about 3 millimeters. Using implant anchor, Stent was uh, fixated in number 26. Flattening drill was used first. Because socket did not fully heal, flattening drill was used. The assumption was that residual alveolar bone was 3 mm. One cast drill, 2.2 by 7 mm drill with a 5 mm stopper was used. A 2 mm drilling was done. If we were to do it freehand, it would not have been easy to do 2 mm drilling. Because the residual alveolar bone height is uh, slightly over 3 mm, in order to do 2 mm of initial drill, on 2.2 by 7 mm twist drill, 5 mm stopper was added and 2 mm drilling was done. One cast 2.8 by 7 mm with 5 mm stopper was used. 2 mm drilling was performed in this way. This would not have been easy if I were to do it freehand. Before moving on to 3.8, I used a 5mm stopper on 3.3 and did a 2mm drilling once again. 3.8 by 7mm with 4mm stopper was used for 3mm drilling. Because residual bone height was over 3mm, I did not think that there would be any perforation. With 3.8, I added 3mm stopper and did drilling up to 4mm. I checked whether there was penetration using depth gauge. Because drilling was done up to 4 mm, on depth gauge 6 mm stopper was added. You can see that the template is not fully in contact, hence you can get a sense that the sinus floor was not penetrated. 3.8 by 7 mm with a 2 mm stopper was used to drill up to 5 mm. While I was drilling, I felt that the sinus floor was penetrated. It's not really visible on the video clip, but I got the sense. Depth gauge with 5 mm stopper was used to check the penetration. You can see that the stopper of the depth gauge was in contact with the template. When drilling was done up to 5 mm, penetration was done and hydro lift was done thereafter. In 3cc syringe, 0.5cc was placed, aspiration was done. You can see that there's blood upon regurgitation. As a result, we could confirm that sinus membrane was lifted without sinus membrane perforation. Negative pressure was observed. Bone graft was performed. A bone carrier was used. Condenser was used to push it in gradually within sinus floor. Bone graft was done using crystal approach. 
EOS, a bovine bone was used. The EOS particle bone was placed gradually. Sufficient amount was bone grafted. Once again, hydraulic lift tool was used to do aspiration. You can see that there is a negative pressure and it doesn't come down. PS3 5.0 by 8.5 millimeter implant was placed after removing the last of cell line. There was a vertical anchor, so you can see that the implant was positioned very stably. Implant was placed about 80% using engine. Implant driver was used to get the final position. Because the vertical anchor was implant anchor, you can see that primary stability is sufficient. Yellow marking was used to check depths and hex. The implant anchor was removed first. Smart peg was connected to measure ISQ value in number 22 first. In number 22, it was about 73 and 75. Number 24, it was almost up to 80. In number 26, primary stability was comparatively favorable and it was up to 77. Because crystal approach was done, healing abutment was chosen. In number 26, healing abutment with a gingival height of 6 mm was connected. In number 24, 6 mm height healing abutment was connected. As for anterior area, 4.0 by 7 mm healing abutment was connected. This was how surgery was completed. Today I've shown you how one cast was used. Although there was residual tooth in number 7 and template was fixed stably, because the residual bone height was about 3 mm and for safer procedure in number 24 implant anchor was connected and it was used as vertical anchor. One cast was used thereafter during surgery as mentioned. You would drill from 2 millimeters when there's 3 millimeter of residual bone height. If I were to do it freehand, it would have been extremely difficult, but by using one cast, I was able to place the implant in the desired position. One year follow-up was done and there was no major problem. Thank you for watching today.